Hi, I'm Dan. Welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to show you how I sanded and prepped this gas tank and then sprayed it with Createx Autoborn Sealer. I'm going to use a black sealer because I'm going to be putting a gloss black paint over it. And I'm going to show you how easy this is to do and how great this product is. Again, not sponsored by Createx. It looks like I am, but I'm not. Just a really big fan of over 20 years. I really believe in their paint. Got turned on to these sealers a little while ago and just love them ever since. So if you're interested in this type of content, stick around, see how it's done. Give me some comments, good or bad. It really helps out with YouTube algorithm and help build this channel. Don't forget to check out all my affiliate links for the products I use in this video. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Consider subscribing. So let's get started. All right, so what I got here today is a motorcycle tank or half of a motorcycle tank. And I use this to do samples on. So like right now I have a graphic on here it was just a sample airbrush graphic, but I'm gonna sand this down. We're gonna wet sand it with some 600. Okay, you could use 400, 600. You just wanna smooth this out because right now I have a little airbrush edge on that and we're gonna be repainting this tank. So, and putting another sample on it. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wet sand it down, okay, clean it all off, and then we're gonna seal it with uh, Createx Airborne Sealers. And we're gonna be spraying our tank black, so I'm gonna be using the black sealer. I'm going to show you how well this stuff covers. A great product by Createx, so stick around. All right, well, I'm not going to be going with a sanding block or anything because my goal here isn't to level or flatten. Uh, I've done that um, previous when I got this tank. I got it from a salvage yard. It was a little dented up and stuff like that, so I uh, sanded it down, sealed it. Now, again, if we're doing some kind of leveling on it, we'll be using a sanding block. I'm just going to use this to knock the edge off and smooth out the graphic I already have on here and then we're gonna go from there. Now, I'm just using straight water. I know some people put some dishwashing soap in there, a couple drops. You can do that, it's fine. It helps the, the sandpaper to uh, you know run a little smoother. The other good tip with wet sanding is, you should put your sandpaper into your water, leave it in there for a while, let it really soak up. The key to wet sanding is really is to make sure you have enough water and your paper's moving freely. So you don't get any buildup here. And you wanna clean off your paper pretty regularly. See, now that edge is already gone. I mean, it doesn't take much. It's just airbrush paint, so it's, you know, it's not very, very hard. I didn't put it, uh, any of the UVLS clears in with the paint. So it's, you know, that would make it dry a little harder. I didn't clear coat over top of this either. So it's not like I got to take the clear coat down. Yeah, just kind of going over it and already, I mean, it just takes that edge right off. But it does show you, even sanding over, you know, the airbrush or the Createx paint, it really does show you how durable it is. And as long as your surface is prepped up right underneath, this paint's going to stick. And it's going to stick good. And as you can see, I'm sanding over it. And that paint's not going anywhere. but knocking the edge down is quite easy. So I'm gonna give the whole tank a little going over because like I said, we're gonna put a sealer over it. So we'll make sure it's good and cleaned up. Now you just want to run your hand over everything and you could feel if you missed any spots you know make sure it's nice and smooth if you feel anything you want to hit again just give it a little more just need some light pressure here nothing real heavy
Now again, if this was going to be, uh, you know, a real tank going on a real motorcycle, I probably would take or sand a lot more of this off. But right now it's smooth. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. I really want to keep it on there because I want to show you how well um, this black is going to cover everything, not only the red, but anything that's on here. Um, that's the whole point of the, uh, the sealers, uh, not only to give you superior adhesion, but uh, its ability to cover up and make all your under surfaces, you know, un what you're putting on top of your under surface, nice and uniform. So now you saw me go back and hit a spot. Well, I'll tell you what, even though there's not a clear coat on this, it was a, it was a gloss coat, okay? So I don't wanna see anything glossy. So it's hard to tell, like you said, when you wipe away your paper towel sometimes, it's still wet. But you'll see it when it dries. That's why I come back with a nice dry cloth. And when you dry that off, you will be able to see anything that is shining. And if it's shining, you don't want that. You want it all to have a nice, even, dull, You want it to have a nice, you know, even dull shine or lack of shine. How about that? I actually found a, a spot in the paint where it actually could be leveled a little bit. No, it's not a great idea to try to level it with your fingers. At that point, you probably should get a leveling block. I'm just being a little lazy here because I know it's only a test tank. You know, sometimes when you start sanding, it really does bring out, you know, the underlying uh, things that you may have not seen or might have been hidden a little bit. Because um, that, that little area right there was not really apparent on that top coat. Um, but as I sanded down in, it became apparent. You know, prep work really does matter. Actually, most of the work is in the prep work. I mean, paint isn't going to hide anything. It's only going to enhance something. So if your prep work underneath isn't good, you're gonna, it's going to show through on your paint job. So you want to make sure that all of your prep work and your sealing and your priming all looks great because that is the base of everything that you're going to be putting paint down on. And paint is not going to hide it. Okay, and my favorite thing to clean with usually is mineral spirits. I know there's a lot of cleaners out there. Um, there's a lot of preps out there. If this product, in my opinion, can be used, that's all you need. As long as it's compatible about with you know what you're putting on it usually is mineral spirits is a pretty mild cleaner in my opinion um, could be used for more than this cleaning cleans a lot of different things not just paint give it a good wiping down with it you know you can see some uh, paint coming off on it you know some what was left behind, even though I wiped it good with the dry, the dry rag. So we're going to make sure we wipe it down good. Just to note that is mineral spirits right over airbrush paint. That is well cured, I might add. So you're putting a solvent-based cleaner over a water-based paint. As long as it is fully cured, it's not a problem. 
try not to touch the tank after you prep it with your hands. You'll see that I'll be wearing rubber gloves. The oils from your, the oils from your fingers will get on the surface and paint doesn't like to stick to oil. So with that, let's get the sealer out. All right, so just a couple items here that you wanna get in order before you get started. And of course, we're gonna have our Autoborn uh, sealer by Createx, in our case today, black. We're gonna be reducing it with 10% of the 4011 reducer by Createx. We got our gun here. This gun has a 1.0 needle in it. It's a little jam gun. A mixing cup, a strainer. I used to never think I needed one of these things until you're halfway through your project and your gun clogs. It's cheap insurance. Make sure you put your paint through a strainer. Um, you know, paint can get clumpy sometimes. You know, I shake it up well, but it still can get clumpy. You don't want one of those clumps getting in your gun. It's going to get stuck. And most importantly, a respirator. And in a few minutes, I'll show you the exhaust fan that we're going to be using on this project. Uh, it's a homemade fan that I made. I'm going to have a video on that. Pop a card up above. Go check that out. All right, so no exact science to this. I mean, you just gotta get it close. So if I got three, I'm gonna go with four ounces. About 10% of the 4011. It's really good. Again, just get it close. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mix this up, let it sit for about 10 minutes, come back, give it another little mix before you put it in your gun, let it all solidify. Let that reducer work in there with the paint. Kind of let it melt together. All right, one last thing that's really important out in the garage. You know, a lot of videos you watch, everybody's doing it in ideal or perfect conditions. When you're out in the garage, it's never a perfect condition. It's either too hot, too cold. Very rarely do you get a perfect condition. Now, today is the exception. It's early spring here in uh, Virginia, and it's about uh, 73 degrees, it's telling me. What you want to do is you want to get yourself a temperature and humidity gauge. Now today it's saying it's 73 degrees in here with 52% humidity. That is, that's spray booth conditions, okay? That doesn't happen very often. It just happens to be the day it is today. Usually um, about 80, 85 degrees in here. Uh, the humidity is a lot higher, you know, especially in the dead of summer. So there are ways of getting humidity out of here or lowering the humidity with some fans. I'll show that in a later video. But what's the most important thing is, is that you get one of these for your garage. This one happens to be magnetic. I'm sure you got a toolbox or something in your garage. Slap it on your toolbox. Uh, I'll pop a link for this one that I bought on Amazon down below. Um, I really do like it because it gives you the high for the day, the low for the day. It just gives you some other information and it's not super expensive. Well, all right, it's been sitting a good 10 minutes. Going to give it a little stir right there. One last stir. This is where we're going to use the strainer. Again, cheap insurance. All right, I got our fan here, our exhaust fan. It's a dual exhaust fan. Again, I'm gonna pop a card up above. I'm gonna show you guys how I made this fan for just about around $100. And it's just a fantastic exhaust fan. I am gonna be lifting up the door, but before we do that, I'm gonna zoom in here on this test pattern. And we are gonna test our pattern and our paint out before we hit our tank. All right, I got my test pattern up here. Before I start spraying new, um, I had a little bit of a hard time beforehand because I usually have a water trap right here. Now it's a small project, so I'm not going to worry about it for this video, but I recommend you put a water trap on. Mine was cracked. I plugged my air hose in and it was air just coming out all over the place. Couldn't figure out why for a second. I looked at it. My air, uh, my water trap was cracked. 
So I don't have a replacement right now. So I'm not gonna hold up the video for it. Just wanna let you know you should have a, a water trap here. I also have my pressure gauge here. Gonna be spraying about 35 PSI and I'll see how it works on this test. As you can see here, it gives you an arrow this way, you know, left to right and down the page. I'm also going to spray and see what my oval or my fan spray is gonna look like. Now, I'm gonna turn my fan on here. Let's give it a test. Turn it to the horizontal direction. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So it's all in the setup. You want to make sure your paint's reduced right. Your spray pattern looks good. Let's go hit the tank. All right, so what I did with the fan was I left it right where I was at. Instead of opening up the garage door, I just cracked the van door. I really do want to show you guys how this is a pretty well self-contained fan that with just a little bit of positive airflow, it really keeps your overspray down in your garage. All right, let's get painting. Hmm, how's that pattern? All right, so I started painting and I stopped immediately because I saw something. I saw fingerprints. I can't believe I missed them, but this is a perfect example. I'm kind of glad it happened. I can see fingerprints in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this back off, make sure it's all clean up again, tack it off and give it another try. All right, let's give it another go. I mean, look at that, that's one coat. That's one light coat. All of that graphic is gone. Got a nice wet finish, you know, looks beautiful. It just really does. For one coat, it's just fantastic. I can't say enough about it. I've used other products. I didn't get one coat coverage like that. This stuff does what it says it's supposed to do. And that's superior coverage over any, all colors. Could be a variety of colors. And I am gonna give it one more coat just because it's what I like to do. But honestly, that one coat coverage like that, I just, I haven't had any other product that really performed as well as this does. So I'm very happy with it. The other thing I'm really happy with is again, that fan. All of that spraying, no overspray here in the garage. Got a door cracked open, the fan's taking care of the rest. So I'm gonna put at least another coat on it, maybe even a third, but, so when you first spray it, it's gonna look glossy. Okay, what you're looking for on the recoat is for it to dry matte. Once you see it dry up to a matte finish, it's ready for the next coat. All right, well our finish is a nice matte, or as I like to say, rat rod finish. Uh, looks really good, so we're gonna go with a second coat, and that's probably all I'm gonna put on is two coats uh, because it got very good coverage on the first coat. So here we go.
there you go, coat number two. It's looking good. I'm really happy with that. It's ready for paint. Well, there you have it. A fully prepped tank. We've got the Createx Autoborn sealer on it. Like I said, the results show for itself. Great product. This tank is now ready for paint. So with that, I hope you like this content. If you do, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Give me some comments, good or bad. It really helps out with the channel. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for all the products I use in this video. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.